Hi there, Hamish McLaughlin here, and a big thanks for watching The Last Time I Cried, brought to you by AIA Vitality. Lee Matthews is known as one of the hardest men to have ever played our great game. In this episode, Lee speaks about the moments that left him speechless as a player and a coach, and an emotion-charged night on the Kokoda Trail. Lee is the greatest player of all time. A crier? Occasionally. Uh, the odd movie, actually. It depends on your definition of crying, doesn't it, Hamish? The, uh, like, Ride Like a Girl, that Sea Biscuit movie, they sort of really emotional. I'll get watery eyes watching, you know, watching those kind of movies. But if you talk about the bawling type crying, occasionally, very occasionally. I've seen you cry once, 1985. Oh, well, that was the public one, wasn't it, really? In 1985, after the grand final. Lee Matthews, well over 300 games. Today, the last time, he'll be wearing the brown and gold. Hawthorne and Essendon, I think we can expect some fireworks early. Madden gets the first tap out. Lee Matthews gets the first kick and puts Hawthorne into attack. I knew it was going to be my last game. It's funny, but you're still a footballer when the game started. I'm still a footballer at three-quarter time. The game ends, and we got beaten by about 80 points, but the game was sort of lost a long way out. So you knew you were going to lose a long way out, not like losing a close game. And I guess as, as I was going off the field and, and the Hawthorne teammates decided to it sort of raise me up a little bit, lift me up on the shoulders a little bit, the emotions got to me then. And sports people say it all the time, it's like part of your dies. Might have been the dark side of my soul, I think, sometimes, Hamish. So maybe it was good that it disappeared, but from the time I walked over the boundary line, that's the last time that part of me ever was needed. Um, you know, that really aggressive, on-field, competitive type thing. So on that grand final day in 1985, our reserves were playing the curtain raiser and the Hawthorne reserves won the premiership. And through in their celebration, they came into the rooms briefly and the emotion of getting ready for the contest ourselves, their joy and jubilation. That was a bit like when you start to well up, you know, the emotions really sort of got hold of me. Are you more sensitive now, father, grandfather, and have lived than you were? It was a pretty hard bugger as a, as a young 20 year old and driven and all those kind of things, you know, you know very insular in a way. You know, I think, as, and I think it's probably normal, but as you get into your middle age and your kids, you know, you see your ki have your kids, your kids grow up, and then you have your grandchildren, they start to, they, they grow up. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I, I would be more, uh, a little bit more caring and feeling and caring than I probably would have been in my younger life. My mates all say, God, you're lucky working with Lee. I said, well, he's just one of the most fabulous men. They said, tell me about him. I said, well, as far as I can gather, he used to be like Clint Eastwood from Dirty Harry. And now he's Clint Eastwood from Bridges of Madison County because he and I talk about things that yeah. just yeah. aren't football. And my father's a bit the same. He's mellowed and softened and mm. he's much better now at showing his emotions than he ever was. Oh, well, and family becomes even more important when, you know, so your parents go and, you, you know, your kids grow up and you and your grandkids grow up. And the thing about people, we change a lot. I yeah. mean, we're the same person, clearly, um, but gee, we're different as a 20 year old, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever have you. I mean, I think that's the journey of life. Yeah. Well, I always look back. Of course, of course, particularly as a player, even more as a, than a coach, I was so, you know, I was so driven to succeed and do my best and all that stuff. Yeah. That you kind of felt like you didn't, it was not so, it was not so much time you didn't spend with your kids, you just, your mental energy was elsewhere. Yeah. And yeah, and distracted. My, my, both my girls now, you know, they both, they almost sort of both say that, you know, that that kind of. You were in the house, but you weren't there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're physically there, but you, you you might be mentally on focusing on on something else outside your outside your family. So that's one of my uh, regrets of life. But can't go back. You got teary when Shorey came off for the last time. Well, not when he came off. That was 1994. Uh, yeah. And we uh, and we were playing the Eagles in Perth, um, and the Eagles were top team, and we finished eighth. So it was eight eighth versus first, and uh, and Tony Shaw, and one of the most competitive, uh, competitive, strong, mentally, you know, he was just outstanding. Strained his calf at training, and he he went to one of the uh, one of the magic hands people that somehow he found in Perth, who all of a sudden cured him. 
His fitness test was running down the corridor at the hotel, <laughs> so I can run him, I go. Anyway, he did his calf in the first five minutes, so he was sitting on the bench all day. But it was more than at the end of the, at the, end of the game, uh, we'd actually, uh, Mick McGuan had a chance to take a mark and maybe kick the winning goal. So we just got it beaten by a smidgen. But that was the end of the campaign. I went into the rooms and normally you try and sort of work in the game or a few words to sort of finalise that particular day. <laughs> I was so choked up, I couldn't talk. I thought to myself, I'd better, I'd better not say anything to you because I'm, I, uh, I, uh, I, I was not in great uh, control of my emotional state either. I thought to myself, well, I can't, can't really uh, say much here because I'm almost uh, going to be a blubbering mess if I choose to do that. Same thing happened when uh, Alistair Lynch we done at the end of the 2004 grand final and we were going for four in a row, the Lions, and we lost. And I was just starting to wind the game up and Lynchy got jumped up and said, well, I just want to announce this has been my last game. So that was a bit of the same. That The emotion sort of started to bubble over in me. So was, yeah. I, did, I just didn't say anything further either. So every now and again, there's a lot of times in the footy, in your footy environment where the emotional state uh, will sort of bubble over into... Yeah. Uh, Rarely a blubbering mess, but uh, but certainly uh, certainly where you feel like your uh, your emotional states are overflowing. Did you cry about 15 years ago? Well, yeah. Well, two things happened in 2005. My mother passed away, and Mum went into hospital on the Thursday night, and and Saturday morning we went down to to visit her, and I was going to be coaching the the Lions that 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 evening. And she was on life support, basically. And, and all of a sudden, she was going to die. And it was all unexpected, was it? Yeah. The, the, when she went into hospital on the Thursday night, there was no thought that something life-threatening was going on. It was just a matter of sometime that day, uh, she was going to pass away, and uh, my two brothers were there. I pulled my eyes out for that. At that moment, that, when I walked out of the room after knowing, you know, we you know, uh, and we all lose people close to us, yeah. that, was, that was one that that sticks, sticks in mind. But I understand that. Later that year, we went to do the Kokoda track with the, with the Lions team. And I guess I was a 53-year-old then. The players were going to do the track, which is about 100 k's up and down mountains in Papua New Guinea in about four days. And I was, I was so conscious of not collapsing on the side of the track. <laughs> You know what I, mean? I thought to myself, it doesn't matter that I'm much older than the players. See the coach like prostrate like and uh, on the side of the track. So I was so afraid that I wouldn't be able to make it, and and I'd embarrass myself in a way. Anyway, we got to the last night, and on the where the camp was on the last night, we were going to finish about lunchtime. They said the following day. She so had about a half day to go, so the hard work was done. And I don't, still don't know why we we got, got to the camp. They all the, put they put the tents up. I went to the tent and bore my eyes out. And, and that is what I can't understand. Some mix of emotions, of stress, I guess, of uh, fatigue, and um, we were about to finish. So I guess it looked like I was going to make it. So I thought it, was, oh, it looked like I'm going, to, I'm going to make it. That is the last time I guess I've uh, I've kind of bore my eyes out uh, alone in the tent. Um, the last evening uh, of that Kokoda track. Would I mean, can you put your finger on what it was that had you just disappear by yourself and, and cry? No, no, I still can't work out what was the set of emotions that, uh, uh, that created that. And I remember the following day on the last hill to, to finish it, and you go through a cavalcade of, uh, of, uh, of either the sticks that you're using to, uh, you know, using to help yourself. But anyway, that, I must admit, I was doing that with my head down because the eyes were certainly watering then. Is that right? So I think it's just, it's, it, I mean, we cry out of sadness, we understand that, but we also cry out of a really extreme emotions that are welling up within us. And for me, I guess, I, I guess that was just the relief that it looked like I'd survived what for me was completely out of my comfort zone for, you know, three or, three or four days. So. Uh, yeah, I, I often, I still look back on that and I'm not sure why I, I could ask the question, but I don't know the reason why I know I did. Did you tell Vossi or anyone else what had happened in the tent? Don't think so. Yeah. No, that was just my little bit of an alone moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nothing to do with your mum? No, no, this was six months after mum yeah. passed away, so no, it was nothing to do with my, 
Oh, no. The same reason, I guess, before the 1985 grand final, you, you almost came to tears with that built the, this emotion that was, you know, that was building up uh, within on that particular day.